Hey, I'm not surprised, motherfuckers. <laughs> What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Birth Outside of Podcast. Once again, I'm Josh Shalaf. As always, welcome by the one and only man of the hour, too sweet to be sour. Future Jujitsu, Misfits, and Andrew, what's it this week? I mean, what are you gonna, which, when's the next fight, man? I mean, no, uh, in the future Leftway Champion. Yeah, future, future Leftway Champion, Angel Ortega. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. Before we break into all the news, we actually, fuck that, Josh. Can you redo it? Aikido. I'm sorry to cut you you're, off. Oh, you're an Aikido. Have you been working with Sensei Seagal? Oh, Josh, I have mastered all the techniques since he's the guy showed me. <laughs> you're, even, you're even shitting your pants as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> he taught you that. <laughs> he taught me now how to go to the bathroom, dude. I'm literally Kim Jong-un. I don't shit myself. <laughs> for real, man, for real. But, uh, you know, before we break into all the news and we break into the fights, uh, we are brought to you by two sponsors of the show, Rogue Energy and Elixir. Code sound off for both. You guys know the deal by now. Rogue Energy to keep me fueled up, keep me going through my day. Yesterday, I hit the gym pretty fucking hard, but you know what? I was able to keep on going, go to work, get all my stuff done. Thanks to Rogue Energy. They got me to the finish line. They can help you get there with code sound off at checkout for 10% off. Elixir, the exact opposite. Also yesterday, I decided to unwind at the end of the day with some Elixir because they have, De- they have Delta 8, 9, 10, HGC products. And you can get it for a code sound off for 10% off at checkout. Once again, Rogue Energy and Elixir, code sound off at checkout. Uh, Angel, look, man, it was the fight of the weekend. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody, you know, and we, even we were guilty of this. We said we weren't really, really going to talk about it. I wasn't really looking forward to it that much. But on fight night, Jake Paul, Nate Diaz did put on a show. They, the, the tagline was ready for war. I don't know if it was a war necessarily, but Jake Paul ends up picking up the win. You name decision. Um, Got a knockdown in the fifth, which essentially pretty much, I mean, I admitted the fight was, it was pretty much one-way traffic until I'd say the last couple of rounds, but uh, yeah, man, big win for Jake. Nate was competitive. I mean, what'd you kind of make of the whole fight? I'd say it was probably the best outcome for all parties involved. That That's what I keep hearing, and that's how I felt. I'm like, you know something? In the end, everybody kind of didn't lose, you know? <laughs> didn't lose, didn't look bad. I mean, and, and look, man, for as much as we trolled all those shit with fucking, he trained with Andre Ward. You know, I wouldn't say necessarily tra- showed through, but there was a little something there, right? And, dude, by the way, Nate's chin, still yeah, unbreakable. Does get dropped. By the way, Josh, Jake Paul continues his streak of mm-hmm. dropping every single opponent he's ever faced. Yeah. I even I, I completely forgot to even drop Tommy. I had to go back when I heard that because I was like, wait, hold up. You dropped Tommy? Yeah, Flash knocked down in the eighth, yeah. Yeah, with a jab. Yeah. With, with a jab, which surprised me, uh, especially because Jake's jab is, you know, not going to lie, it's kind of shit. It's very non-existent. I think it's one of the things that he needs to improve a lot. Of. I yeah, think that's, I agree. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that's preventing him from being very – to, like, take the next step in his boxing development because, dude, in this fight, I'm like, dude, Throw a fucking jab out there. Do something with the jab. And when he and when he did, I don't know if you realize, like some stuff started showing through, and some there was some sort of success, and combinations landed. I think if Jake developed a strong jab or a better jab, you know, that, I'm not going to say he's to be a problem, but you know, he'd be getting better, especially because we know he has power. He has this capability to hurt guys that we've seen time and time again. I mean, he dropped Nate pretty pretty good. I mean, I mean there was some momentum involved and everything, but my boy, dude, I'm surprised I didn't get memed more because it was a pretty. It was a pretty good fall, you know? Yeah, but he, he gave him the Bambi legs, man. Yeah. Yeah, like, he went down. He almost fell out of the ring. I'm like, damn, they got to push that motherfucker back in like it's pride. You know, they had the fucking guys on the edge pushing motherfuckers back in. He gave me that kind of vibe. But uh, about it, it fight itself, I mean, yeah, I mean, everybody had their moments. Everybody had their moments. I mean, it just goes to show Nate still has to uh, continue growing, continue developing, and uh, – there was a lot of talk, I think, Josh, that I listened to another podcast, uh, kind of regarding like the future of all this. And look, I think inevitably there will be an endpoint for it. I, I've always said, dude, like I don't know why anybody thinks these guys are gonna go crazy for. It. There's gonna be a peak, and that peak is gonna be when Jake and JJ fight one day. You would imagine. I think that's that. I think that'll be the end of YouTube boxing. Granted, there will be some some events with big creators, and I think we'll pull people, but I think that's when this whole saga will end. 
Yeah. Unless Jake Kido continues and decides to take on maybe some pros and some le- like some pro legends and and stuff like that, like I'll continue there. But inevitably, I think that's where it peaks. I think that will be the biggest you know matchup in this YouTube slash celebrity crossover matchmaking that we'll ever get. And I'll peek at that, and it'll be the biggest pay per view out of all of them. If not, it'll be close to the Logan and JJ one that we had mm. a few years back. Because, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean that's that's where it has to end. You know what I mean? It has to it has to end with the guy who who kind of blew it up, or one of the halves that blew it up, right? Um, mm. What are your kind of thoughts on all this YouTube boxing stuff, and kind of like people saying, you know, it's slowed down, there's some stuff going, you know. It, yeah. It's kind of retracted a bit, and then look, it was going to eventually. I ne- like, I, I, I always thought this was going to be a thing. I'm like, guys, this was never intended for the people who genuinely liked combat. This was intended for, I mean, this was entertainment. You know, this was TV. This is reality TV. You know, this was, yeah. A, you know, this was a it's pro a wrestling script. Yeah, it was pro wrestling. Yeah, I mean, look, man. Um, <clears throat> so a couple of thoughts. I don't think YouTube. I think like. YouTube boxing will is here for good. I think it's here going to be here in some form or facet or another. Especially, uh, especially considering Misfits is legitimately a successful company. I mean, they signed that five year deal with the Zone. As long as the Zone is around, Misfits will probably be around. I think Kingpin, their days are probably numbered. Um, and I do think that there is a slowdown in interest in in YouTube boxing. And I think it's mainly because a lot of fights aren't being made that people want to see. I mean, and I think the big rise in YouTube boxing partially had to do with the fact that boxing was kind of in a shitty place to begin with. I mean, heavyweights, the heavyweight division. Like, let's let's just let's just go back. Actually, let's go back to like when was the first KSI Logan in 2018? It was August 2018. Well, that that was that yeah. was the one where like it took off from there. Cause, yes. You know, we got to give respect to the original one, Joe Weller, and I forget the guy. Theo Baker. Yes. Theo Baker, and then from Theo Baker. Yeah. Yes. And so. Then it went- Went from Theo to Joe and JJ, and then that's when we got Logan and JJ. Yeah, but necessarily my point is that it kind of came into the full focus and kind of like became like a super mainstream and popular thing in 2018. It's like think back to 2018. It's like what happened that year? Okay, Canelo robbed the shit out of Triple G on their first fight. Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder and AJ were stuck in their trio situation. Floyd Mayweather was retired. Um, Errol Spence and Tip, funny enough, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, I mean, it's like, I don't know if they were, they were in talks back then, but I know they weren't far off, you know what I mean, from that, it was around that time, like, a lot of the big fights weren't being made, now big fights are being made, there's less of a need for, for people to kind of watch this type of stuff, um, but that being said, I still think there's going to be interest, I do think there's there's a market making fights right now, but what I do think, and I'm intrigued to know the European on this, I think Jake Paul has people. I don't know if YouTube boxing is beat. I think if he fights KSI, that'd be a huge fight, but I think that's probably the last one that he has. Because yeah. there's no more mystery with Jake Paul. I mean, I mean, he would have to do something drastic, right? He would have to beat someone either very good or someone very popular who's young in their prime, you know, to an extent, right? To an extent, I'd say. Someone with yeah. some sort of relevance and interest, and I don't know who that would be at this time. Um... That's what I'm saying. I think the peak is in the end, the true end of like it being at its maximum potential is going to be inevitably when that JJ and J Paul fight, whenever, if it is this year or next year. Uh, because I've always said that's, that's where it's going to end and it has to happen like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, listen to a lot of these guys who follow this stuff and it's very interesting hearing their different perspective guys who are not necessarily grew up with these guys in their life and will all follow their careers. And kind of only discovering them now through combat, you know what I mean? Because I feel yeah. like I th- I'm very happy that we cover, and I wish you know our outlet was even bigger, so we can kind of give people a better perspective on all of this. Because we grew up with these guys, you know. Yeah. Um, we seen their ups and downs, their fuck ups, their cancel uh, on both sides. And uh, no, I mean it's crazy. You got you got to give credit to the numbers these guys pull because look. I mean, look at the fucking Tommy Fury, JJ Post, how many likes that got. I mean, these guys are still bringing in massive fucking numbers to this sport, yeah. whether you like it or not. They're getting more attention than some of fucking, like some USC pay per view post. You know what I mean? Yeah. And even big time boxing, like, it, it, there, there's still an interest here. You know what I mean? There's still money to be made here. That's mm-hmm. not going to go away. And also, they've inspired, I think, maybe not a lot, but a generation of people to kind of get into this stuff, you know, and follow this sport and, 
and kind of stick around for it or just follow combat in general, which I think is a positive thing uh, for everybody. You know, at the end of the day, we want eyes on the sport and we want it to grow and, and, and get these guys paid and pay everybody who's involved in it and, uh, you know, make a, you know, give people different uh, outlets and stuff. Because some guys, like, imagine if Misfits wasn't around, what would Pretty Boy Taylor be doing? Fighting regional fights? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Fighting, you know what I mean? Not to be disrespectful or anything, but, you, you know, where would he be at? You know what I mean? Uh <laughs> Where would some of these guys be at? You know, like what, what would be of them? And uh, you know, this opportunity has come, and these people have gotten attention because of these guys who are pros, like Amanda Serrano, or like uh, Ash itself. You know, um, there there's been something from it positive. You know, whether or not you like it. Mm-hmm. Um, but kind of to talk about Nate, because we need to talk about Nate. We talked a lot about Jake here. Uh, Fuck, dude. What, what can you say about Nate? I mean, it's 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 it was Nate Diaz, right? I mean, you yeah. kind of knew what you were gonna get, right? Like, what a yeah, fucking, I mean, what look, a troll, man. right? Yeah, a complete troll. I mean, I loved it. I loved it. You know, I mean, look, uh, I think this was the best outcome imaginable for Nate Diaz. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's almost 40 years old coming up, and, and again, like he they weighed 185. Jake. Yeah, you know, this is the lightest he's been for a fight, and this is the heaviest that Nate's been for a fight. You know what I mean? Um, he's not a natural 185, or he's not even a natural 170 pounder. His best weight class is 155. He's 40 years old. He's almost 40. He's never boxed before. I think it went about as well as you could have possibly, you know, asked for. I mean, like, out of curiosity, like, actually, I'm not going to ask for your scorecard, but, like, about how many rounds you gave him? I actually gave him about, like, three or four rounds. Like, granted, it wasn't close because of the knockdown and everything, but. There, there was close rounds. Uh, like, if, uh, there was ones where I was, like, I could argue for it. But, you know, it's funny, Josh. I, I was actually going to – good thing you brought this up because yeah. I love seeing the difference between MMA fans scoring versus the guys who are strictly boxing guys scoring because it was insane to me Yeah, how, how different – it was. You saw the the separation. Uh, there's a few boxing guys that I follow that strictly do boxing. They're not MMA guys. They don't do anything outside. Like there's no interest in MMA. They've never watched a lot of MMA. If anything, maybe they've catched like a few big cards, and maybe a lot of maybe they caught a few Connor cards here and there. But uh, I think I had a similar card to them. I had it like what was it, ninety seven, ninety two. And I look, I could have even made it even closer than that, which I wouldn't even argue with. But I, I kind of had similar card to what a lot of the, these boxing guys mm-hmm. that strictly follow boxing had. So, but I had MMA guys being like, "It was close. It was a robbery." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't a robbery. It, it, it wasn't even particularly close. But I did give him around like three or four rounds just to ball. And I don't remember how many off the top of my head, but yeah. Which, you know, I mean, he did have some success yeah. in the last half of the fight. Yeah, um, I, I don't think that's out there either. I, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, Moving forward, I mean, look, it seems like these guys may run it back in MMA or boxing. Um, well, MMA seems to be the main topic. Right? MMA seems to be the main the main topic, but even even Nate was asked about. It. He's like, man, I'll fight him in either. I don't really care if it's MMA. You know, it, it really it seems like it's going to be a Jake decision if it's MMA or boxing. I'll give him props if he does, but um, I don't know, man. I've never really been a believer in the MMA talk. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we've seen him train with Bo Nickel, and look, who knows there, right? No, I'm not going to say. Jake has a chance. You know, I'm not going to fucking, you know what I mean? It's He fought in his wheelhouse and went his way. He's going to fight in Diaz's wheelhouse. So you know how it probably go, right? Kind of the yeah. same conversation. But, I mean, at the same time, he is older. He has been working with these guys who are involved there. Bo is obviously having a very successful career with not even a lot of fights under his belt or a lot of fight time. So a lot of could be shared there. And it's kind of weird that that relationship kind of came out of nowhere, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't I don't know what the connection is there. But uh, they're boys. They hang out. I've seen it. Um, but yeah, I mean, how, how how serious do you think that PFL talk could even get? Like, do you genuinely believe there's anything there? Because I was like, is how like how how much truth is there to this? You know what I mean? How how real is this number? Or would Nate actually take this? You know what I mean? Because yeah. I, I a lot of MMA guys seem to believe that okay, well Nate did this, he got paid. Okay, now he's gonna go back to the UFC and fight Connor. You know, he saw his worth, he got his money, that's pay day, and he's going to go back to see if I Connor and probably fight Legends, which I'm like, I don't know about that. I don't know yeah, about that. I mean, so so a couple of thoughts, man. I mean, look, uh, the PFL thing, I think Nate has said for a while now that he, he fully intends to turn to the return to the UFC. I think he might be down for a fight with Jake, but I don't think he has any intention of signing to the PFL, which I think is a big issue. Um, I think it would depend on the deal, right? The PFL. 
Yeah. What do you think? I think it would depend on the deal, right? Like if it was going to be a multi-fight deal or just like this is your one-off, you get paid and you're out and you can sign with whoever the fuck you want. Yeah, I mean that's probably it. Because um, I'm sure that PFL would love to keep him around for more, right? Yeah, and if they, look, dude, if the PFL can get Nate Diaz, I think they're off to the races at that point. Because I mean, you would just you would have just I mean, they just re-signed Clister Shields, which I mean just came out right before we started filming. Um, they have Ngannou. Uh, they got Jake. I mean, if they go out there and get Nate Diaz and potentially even for a one-off would be huge, but a multi-fight deal would be fucking. You know what I mean? Um, Granted, a multi-fight could be three fights. You know. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a lot, you know. But even yeah. one or two fight, like more than one, would be massive. I mean, they Especially they really are with this uh, super card series or whatever, right? Yeah, they could, I can't remember what they call it. It's a pay per view series or something. I don't know. It's but yeah, essentially. And then Kayla Harrison is a part of that as well. Like they have a they have momentum. If they can get this fight done, I'd be surprised. But that'd be huge for them. That'd be massive. See, they be, they need a big free agent signing again outside of Francis to like really pop off. And I don't know who that could be. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I genuinely don't know who they could get because. I mean, who, like, could you even think of a name, Josh, you know, someone who doesn't have a lot of fights left, you know what I mean? Like, someone who could genuinely bring eyes, like, they they would really have to get, I don't know, someone like, like a Jorge Masvidal, like an Diaz, you know, like, like, like we're mentioning now to get any sort of, like, major push. And they do have people now, but I'm saying to take, like, a pretty decent step where it's, like, they'll have consistent eyeballs. And if, like, we were talking off air, if they really do get battled to where I think there's a lot of potential, they just need to get away yeah. from this league format and this smart cage bullshit they've been doing. Yeah, if they can go out and get battled to where I think that'd be another huge, a huge get for them. <laughs> yeah, that'd be massive. Um, fuck it, smart cage. Uh, anyways, man, I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, I think we spent enough time on this. I think... It was a fun fight. It was a fun night. It was a lot. It went a lot smoother and better than I thought it would. Um, oh, another thing. Quick yeah. little thing. I know it's, it's not even that big. Cause we need to talk about I was also going to bring up one more thing to you, so go ahead. Uh, how do you feel about Jake in 10 rounds? Uh, did you think he looked kind of decent? Did you think he looked good? Did you see any improvement as far as like, the cardio? Because there was like, a lot of yeah. questions when it went 10 rounds. And we didn't even – I mean, we were even questioning if they were going to go to 10 rounds. Yeah. Uh, we were I'm going to talk to Jake Paul's that. guy. That's, what I got. That's all I got to say about that. I got to talk to Jake Paul's guy, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? You're, you're just, I gotta talk to his guy, man. That guy went from brutally gassing out in what, what well, six granted, round fights. Granted, yeah. he brought in like. No, I know he brought in people, people, but Angel. He brought like a make big... that jump that quick. I forgot, Come on, I forgot who he. Brought Don't in. lie to me. Come on, you know look, the deal. Look, I'm sure there was it was a factor, but he still had to put in the work. You know? No, what no, I mean? of course, of course he did, but let's not lie to each other. <laughs> I'm just saying, I want his guy. I mean, I, I will give him props. He was much. I mean, he obviously he clearly slowed down. Um, but he stayed he in also, it. Huh? He stayed in it though. He did stay in it, and also uh, a big factor that was the ability to clinch, and um, he didn't really have to respect a lot of what Nate was throwing back at him. Yeah. So that was that was two big factors. I'd be very interested to see. Another they thing is pressure, you know. Yeah. Um, but he didn't bring it all the time because I don't even think Nate Diaz could probably keep that same pace that he used to. Yeah, I was gonna say also he hasn't he doesn't know how to manage his cardio across ten rounds. That's another thing too. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was a first time thing. That's another thing, dude. Like no one boxes twelve rounds. Fine, you're not gonna be. You know what I mean? Like if you're good by then, twelve, you probably didn't leave it all out there. You know, not gonna lie. Because dude, <laughs> I love to see anybody try to box four rounds because you are dying. Yeah, I mean, boxing at all, let me be very clear here. Like, I'm I'm giving Jake Paul shit because he's clearly on EPO, but he clearly also put in the work in the gym and he works his ass off. Like, it, to make that leap very quickly was clearly aided by some some stuff. But, look, I'm not delusional. I got, you know, I'm sure fucking uh, half the guys' face have been on stuff, too. So it was impressive nonetheless. I did not see that coming at all. I mean, he had a great oh, come on, Josh. Did you tell me Ben Askren was on something? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah, but, I mean – I'll I'll, uh, I'll give him credit. He did look good for ten. Uh, one last thing I want to bring up because I saw he was there. And I saw some people talking about it. We're not fucking doing Nick Diaz versus the Fall Brothers. We're not doing it. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. We're not doing it. Oh, Josh, you're telling me you don't want a Misfits tag team match, Paul Brother versus Diaz Brothers? That's stupid enough for me to kind of like it. But I <laughs> a straight up fight between Nick against Logan or Jake. 
No. Like, I know that he said he wanted it. Please don't. Like, I don't, like, if they booked that, that'd be fucking, you know. I love that, dude. Tag team match between those guys. Could you fucking imagine brothers versus brothers? Well, you know what Logan said? Logan said that he wants to fight Nick in the co-main of Jake uh, versus Nate in the PFL. He said he wants to fight Nick in MMA. Interesting. Which I've always said, you know, I don't want to go over it, hash it out again, but Logan Paul in MMA, way more interesting than Logan Paul in boxing, which unfortunately we will have to talk about at the end of the show. But I think we should go ahead and move on because we got uh, we got UC, UC Nashville to go over, man. Um, going down the same night from Nashville, Tennessee, Bridgestone Arena, Bantamweights in the main event. Uh, look, man, this was not a great fight. Uh, Corey Sandhagen goes out there and wrestles Rob Font to unanimous decision win, 50-45s across the board. Dana White left in the fourth round. Corey Sandhagen got hurt to top it off, and he might have lost the title shot. So it was – he won, but he lost in just about every other way imaginable. What did you think about his win on Saturday, man? Hey, man, he did what he had to do, you know? <laughs> like, I can't hate on him for it, and he won the fight. I mean, look – this I mean, we you know we'll complain about it. You can complain about it. whoever the fuck's gonna complain about it. But this is a fight game, man, and you gotta be prepared in all facets of it. And Rob Font could have get up. You know, Rob Font could have made this fight interesting. You know what I mean? If Rob mm-hmm. Font was able to get off his back and get on the fight and get Corey Sandhagen to throw, we could have had a different outcome potentially. But sadly, he has holes of that department, which didn't allow him to make the fight in his wheelhouse and make the fight more you know make the fight com- more competitive. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but credit to Corey Sanhagen for being injured and still being able to truck through and uh, and get the double for a guy who's dangerous, you know, because Rob Font could still have hurt Corey Sanhagen at any point in that during during that fight. Uh, obviously rough for him, but look, he's in the mix. He's entertaining. It's a one off, man. We know what Corey Sanhagen can do. He's a dog. Uh, and for Rob Font, I mean, shit. I mean, this kind of kind of shuts down his last run. I mean, it was it was kind of already in a rough spot, anyways. Obviously, he got the the big Giannis win, but I mean, he's he's 36. He's going on 37 next year as a bantamweight. Like, you know what I mean? He's not. It's not going to be too long before he's not here anymore in the rankings. I'll put it like that to be yeah. nice. Shout out to the coaches though for telling him all the right things and telling him, "Hey, bro, you got to do something. You got to do something." But it just it just didn't happen. Yeah. Um. And and look, man. Uh, of course, today he got the win, and I mentioned a lot of negatives. But let me be clear here. I don't necessarily blame Corey Sanhagen for that fight. I mean, somebody like, oh, he should have done, he should have stopped wrestling. It's like, well, you know, is the is the fault on Corey Sanhagen for wrestling, or is the fault on Rob Font for not being able to stop the takedown? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Yeah, man. I mean, good good for him for getting the win. Admittedly, I don't think I have a whole. I don't have much of anything to say about this fight. It was a short notice one. I feel bad for Rob because this one on, on, on short notice and um and he just rebounded with a huge win over Adrian, over Adrian Yanya. So that sucks to see for Corey, man. I mean, look, um he said that he they told him he's gonna get a title shot with a win at Umar. They said they still might get a title shot. I guess they were kind of unclear about that if he beat Rob. Oh dude, beat, let me tell you this yeah. this is all gonna change. You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's all gonna change. I'd be very shocked if he got a title shot. Um and even then, even if he does um, as reported on BJPen.com, greatest MMA website on the planet. One more, one more um, time, Josh. I think I missed it. I think I fucking missed it. Yeah. So, uh, so it's it's B. It's it's like the UFC Hall of Famer uh, is, is my boss. UFC <laughs> Hall of Famer, BJ Penn. Uh, as reported on BJPen.com, Corey Sandhagen will be out due to injury. Um, let me see if I can get the exact injury. Uh, it, was, it was his elbow, right? I believe. Well, right, well, he's going to be headed for surgery. The exact injury is I can't. Fi- yeah, elbow surgery. Um, yeah, he fucked up his elbow, so we don't know how long it'll take. But he's going to be out for a bit. I mean, I you don't. Want, I feel you want me to tell you what's going to happen? I feel bad. What's going to happen? I'll give him a whole breakdown. So if Al Jermaine does beat Sean, I think what's going to happen is you know he vacates the title. You know what the title fight's going to be? It's going to be Umar versus uh, not Umar, uh, Umar versus uh, Marab for the title. I can already tell you that right now. That's 100% what they'll fucking do. You're not wrong. You're That's actually probably what they'll wrong. do. Unless they do Sahuda versus Murat for the title or something crazy like that. Uh, now, if Sean wins, I could actually see a world where Aljamain sticks around and tries to get that back. But I don't know. I mean, these are just some thoughts. Um, 
But yeah, I think that's what's kind of likely to happen, especially if they don't give Corey the. This is this is where I'm saying where Corey doesn't get a shot. Yeah. In any scenario, if not, I think it'll be Corey versus Marab potentially if Aljamain does vacate and go up because I think Marab is. I'm pretty sure they 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 he's right there for the title regardless of the situation. You know. Mm-hmm. If not, and if and if Aljamain does lose, Sean wins, and Aljamain goes up, Marab is there to fight Sean. Yeah, I mean, admittedly for me, I don't have a lot to add just because there's so much uncertainty right now at the Bantamweight division. Um, I mean, Murad said he might go up or go down. I mean, we know Aljo will go up with a win. We, I mean, there's, there's a lot going on, so we'll have to really wait and see. But, um, yeah, at least in regards for what's next for Corey Sandhagen, and I hope they don't take that fucking title shot away from him. I mean, it's, it, was, it was a really shitty situation. And uh, But the man, he stayed in there. He got a win. He took a short-notice guy after already having to face, like, Umar, who was, like, fucking ranked, like, 13 or something, who nobody wanted to fight. So I hope, I think it would be fucked up if they if they take it away from him. But, I mean, they said they're not going to pay Wonder Boy, too. So it's like they put the blame on him for that fight. So you, they've been showing their colors lately. Um, nonetheless, I do think we should move on because the Coleman event, I said it last week, and uh, I think coming out of the card, it's still the storyline of the night. Tatiana Suarez is the real motherfucking deal. Um, she's the real deal Holyfield, man. Comes back, facing former champion Jessica Andrade. Oh, she came in, she near short notice, but wasn't that short a notice. Uh, she signed up for this fight, uh, I believe two months ago. She ends up getting a submission win, Tatiana Suarez, in the second round, guillotine choke. She is back, and I think she needs a title shot. Next, Angel. What do you think about her performance? No, I mean, it was good. It's what I, but to be honest with you, it's what I expected. Unless Jessica showed me something. I didn't, you know, I didn't know. I mean, this is this is what I was going to see. You know what I mean? Uh, to kind of speak on Jessica Andrade a little bit, man. I mean, look, she's been super active, but we've seen the struggles. Like, and look, you can correlate them to certain things and matchups and, and stuff like that. Because, look, it wasn't that long ago that she beat up Laura Murphy in Brazil. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. credit where credit is due. But I feel like she's almost been her own detriment by being so proactive and fighting so much and it's kind of hurting her, and obviously she's taking a fair bit of damage now, and she has a lot of fights. I mean, she has to be one of the female fighters in the whole UFC roster for some of the most fights, right? Like, she has to be up there. I mean, it's mm-hmm. more it's more than 30-something. Yeah, yeah, uh, she's up there, yeah. But to talk about Tatiana, look, awesome, right? We've seen it. There's still some some questions I have in certain departments, but granted, like, it, it, I mean, if she continues doing what she's doing, I mean, look, I mean, I'm what is there to worry about? But I'm happy, dude. She she used her range very well. And used a lot of kicks. Some some little trouble in the stand up game. A little bit of reaching. But look, I mean, look with time, I'm sure it'll get sorted out. Uh, and she has been away from the game. She's been her worst enemy has been injuries, if anything. Um, and I do want to see another one though. I do want to see another one. But she's right there. I mean, look, she's right there. I mean, there's no question about it. So. You know, we'll see, but I, mean, I am, I will say, I will say, UC did really drop the ball still here because I do think they still should have done Yan Shanan versus Wei Lei Zhang in China for the title, but you know, I, I, you know, I digress. Yeah, so a couple, couple th- thoughts, man. Um, I do think they should just go ahead and give the title shot now. I don't really get the rationale of waiting, um, or seeing one more just because I don't, I mean, who else, who else is going to fight for it? I mean, I mean, just looking at the rest of it, it's like there's. I mean, we talked about the strawweight division. I think the strawweight division got badly fucked up over the last two years. I think it's the best division in the UFC uh, for women, anyway. Let me say that. Uh, but I think that they've really fucked it up over the last, you know, year or two. But look at the rest of the division. It's like you know, Yan Jonan. I guess maybe you could give her the shot. Um, but I mean, is it really? Would you rather have Yan Jonan or Tatiana Suarez? I probably first take Tatiana, especially considering Yan Jonan just. She just snapped the win, the losing streak. I mean, she got the big win over on Josh, but I thought, you know, nonetheless, nonetheless. I mean, I just, it's really, it's either going to be Yan Jonan or, or Tatiana Suarez. I'd just pick Tatiana. But I also understand maybe they'll probably just book those two for a title of a or something. Probably what they'll end up doing and make them like a co-main event on a pay-per-view or something. Not a co-main event, a pay-per-view, but maybe a potential on a pay-per-view or just an Apex card, per, you know, because you know they only find the Apex. But you're not wrong. I mean, this division is kind of boned right now. I mean, we have Carla who's out of action right now because she she's having a baby, right? Yeah. Uh, Rose is going up in weight. Uh, 
was it Yansha now just got a win, but she was coming off a loss before that or, or had a win before that. I can't remember. She, there, cause all these punters kind of have like odd little things going on in their records too. Cause even Amanda Lemus isn't that far removed from a loss, but a big mm-hmm. win as well. And then we know, obviously we've seen this fall to Jessica Andrade. Renner Jenerova is the only one who's kind of on the come up. Mackenzie Dern's kind of string, trying to string it together. Obviously Marina Rodriguez has kind of had her own little fall as well. So, I mean, yeah. And then you look at the bottom of the division, no hate here, but we have people like Angela Hill and Michelle Watterson ranked through 13 and 15. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to be mean to those gals or anything. Obviously they're legends of the game. They're tough. They're tough gals. They always come out and give good, great shows, but I mean, those are, some of your ranked fighters. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. not really the best kind of look for the division, you know, when that's the lower end. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't know. That division's in a, in a kind of a weird spot. I mean, and also, when is that uh, When is that title fight with Whaley? Correct I me mean, if I'm wrong. It's, like, just right around the corner, so... Um, is that the is that on the stand? I think it's on part? the O'Malley uh, Aljo card, dude. I think it's literally just like two yes. weeks away. Holy shit, that's crazy that we're talking about all of this and it's yeah. So that, coming that's up. why yeah, that's why I think maybe they won't have time to do a well. They, they, I, I mean, shit. I mean, Whaley's been out for like a year and a half, dude. So not like a year and a half. She's been out for like a year, dude. So I don't know. Maybe they don't really care about keeping this division moving. Yeah, so. I mean, look, and look, let's, I mean. Tatiana can make a pretty decent, good turnaround. You know what I mean? We don't know how what's going to happen here for Whaley and Amanda Lemos, right? Just like to give, you know, we could give credit. You know, we got to give credit, credit to Amanda Lemos is still a dog. So, but granted, that's a conversation here for. I mean, next week, crazy next week. I still can't get over that. We were talking about this earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that is pretty fucking crazy. That is pretty crazy. That is. Dang. Completely forget. I mean, that one's flying under the radar too. I think it's most because most people don't really see Amanda Lemos getting a title shot anyway. Oh yeah. Kind of came out of nowhere. Um, but you know. That's why, but that's probably why I'm assuming that uh, it's it's coming up so quick on us. But yeah, I mean, as far as the rest of the card goes, man, I know we kind of disagreed on the quality of this one, but uh, I think it had what, its moments, man. That's that's the yeah. thing. It did have its moments. I just thought overall it was kind of kind of mid. Overall, what do you think about the card? We, we got we, we, we got we got to get right into it, dude. We got to get right into it right here, right the right fight right under the co-main event. Dustin Jacoby gets to win over Kenny Jr. Gets, put some fucking respect on my boy Dustin Jacoby. He's one of those guys at 205 where I'm like, dude, he's he's there. He's a live dog. Give him, give, get him in these big matchups. He's capable of getting these finishes. He's getting better. He's he had a win streak going there for a while, and dude, he was the underdog going into this one, dude. And I don't know why. It didn't make any sense to me. And I'm like, I get it. He lost his last one in KC. Uh, against Ozma and Marissa Konov. And he got to split with a little round streak, but I thought he should have won that one. Uh, so he should have been only really on a one loss streak. So, and he, he should have had more fights under his, you know, more, another win under his belt. Regardless, he gets a big win here over Kenny Njuwuku, who, another guy who I always highlight, give a lot of credit to. Like I said, he has a beautiful story. And, uh, and I always mentioned he's not a finished product. He's still getting better. Like I said, in, in credit to him, he's, he was on his own win streak. Granted, though, over, a low level of 205ers, you know, and credit to these guys that he beat because they're still dogs. I mean, they got guys like Devin Clark, Kutalab, and Carl Roberson, guys who were just absolute beasts, you know. They come out to fight every single time. But <laughs> let me tell you, this kid is your book. We try to stand with the kickboxer, bro. Come on, my guy. Come on, my guy. You, you know it's going to happen. You got him in. You got him coming in. Um, and another highlight coming out of this card, Josh, who we had mentioned last week. And. I mean, I really don't know who to give my highlighter of the week to. I, I have it between this guy and Dustin Jacoby. Diego Lopez just gets the oh. shot on the UFC, second time around, not on short notice, over Gavin Tucker. Gets kicked in the fucking balls to open up the round, too. But that doesn't matter. He trucks through it, finishes with a with a triangle arm bar. Went into it with a flying triangle, though. What a dog, right? And he's a guy that I've had my eye on for, like, I want to say... We like a good three or four years before he made it to the UFC. Uh, he was fighting in the Lux League for quite some time, and he had actually amassed a pretty sizable record. And uh, he's one of the—I think he's one of the coaches at that Lobo Gym or a gym down in Mexico where he's like one of the main Jiu Jitsu guys. that's always coaching because because he's Brazilian, but he, he lives down in Mexico, I believe, where he spends a lot of his time down in Mexico. And uh, yeah, I was happy to see him. I felt I felt. Kind of disappointed when he went on to the contender series because 
for people who don't know, he was on the Contender Series, fell short there. And I remember seeing that performance. I was very disappointed. But granted, though, he lost to Joe Anderson Brito, who since then has gone really well. I mean, he's won his last three. Only lost in the UFC was to Bill Aguil. It was a, it was a decision, the animus decision at that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was still nice to him to get that uh, shot back. And, I mean, Josh, we talked about this win in the, in the green room. Chad with the bozer. The bulldozer. Get this win at 205. <laughs> Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Yeah, you went in and highlighted a couple of guys. I'm most happy for Tanner Bozer. I'll say it straight off the top. We've always been a big fan of the the Canadian. Um, happy to see him pick up a win. He really needed that one. I mean, we talked about it, like you mentioned, but like four of his last five were losses heading into UFC Nashville. So for him to go ahead and pick up a big one was very, very important for, for the bulldozer. A couple other guys you want to mention. Diego Lopez is the real fucking deal. I mean, I, don't, I do not have uh, enough praise for this kid. Huge win by him over Gavin Tucker. Um, up and down the card, man. I mean, I believe damn near every fight on the free. Yeah, only two fights went to uh, went to a finish on the the early prelims. Unfortunately, one of them was my boy Ode Osborne, who I've always been a bit of a fan of out of Jamaica. But he's he's one of the more entertaining guys, in my opinion, down at flyweight. Um, and he all, he's also a teacher, so I got to go ahead. And, you know, I respect Whoa, a man he's a who, who has two jobs. You know, or at least he was a teacher. Uh, really? Do you know what he taught? Just out of curiosity, just I have no idea. I have no idea. But I, that's what he, according to his wiki, I remember seeing that a while, a long time ago. Yo, that's that's pretty cool, man. That's a you know, teaching is a very respectable career, man. You got it is respectable. Yeah. Could you uh, imagine Odi Osborne is your fucking teacher, dude? <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking. That has to be a trip, man. That's crazy. You're fucking uh, like my teacher's tougher than yours for sure. You know, my teacher can kick your teacher's ass. Dude. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the rest of the card, man. A couple other guys, a couple other fights. Excuse me. Um, I also got to give a shout out to Justin Jacoby, a guy that never really got the respect during his win streak. And like you mentioned, an underdog going into this one did not get the respect once again. Got a big win. You love to see it. Um, overall, man. Last That's guy, a hit. Next. You're next, Alex. You're next. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The rematch? Rematch in MMA. <laughs> Anyways, man. If you know uh, you know. Huh? As I was gonna say, if you know you know. Yeah, exactly, right? Um, last one, Cody Durden. Uh, Cody Durden's turned out to be a much better guy in the UFC than I expected him to be. Um, got a got a big win here over Jake Hadley. 30-27. Didn't agree with that. I thought it was a competitive 29-28. But, dude, these guys were dogs in there. They were scrapping. Cody Durden ends the the fight on top, fucking throwing down some hammer fists. Hits Jake Hadley in the back of the head like five times, but it's all right. He shoves him off, does the DX crop shot, fucking flips him off. <laughs> like, dude, straight up fucking American right there, you know? By the way, do you know he already took out a fight again? Yeah, he's he's fighting next month, I believe. Dude, what the fuck, right? Cody Durden is uh, the flyweight BMF. So. Yeah, I mean, look, his only losses are Jimmy Flick and Muhammad Makayev in the UFC. And that Jimmy Flick fight, was not was that the one that he got a fucking flying triangle on? Yes, right? Yeah, right? I, I don't blame him for that one, man. <laughs> right, you know, in some other universe, it's, it's just, who knows, right? Who knows how rusty Jimmy Flick goes? But it's just Muhammad Makayev, you know, the loss. Yeah. Uh, dude, yeah. you, you also got to give, by the way, fight of the night, right? Had it been Billy Q, Damon Jackson, right? They didn't, I don't, you know, there was no fight of the night. Billy Q is, should be fight of the night every time he fights. I mean, if we're being fully honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those guys, golly, dude, credit there. Damon Jackson. I like Damon Jackson a lot, man. I mean, look, he looks like he could be your high school math teacher. He's not. But damn, he's a fucking dog, too, dude. Oh, Josh, and I got I to gotta highlight my boy. I didn't talk about it on the show yet. Carl Stone Harris. I said, guys, I love this guy. I love his story. I, I, I was really worried about him going to this fight. And look, he lost every second of the fight until he got the choke. But that's okay, because he got the win in the end. Let's go, champ. <laughs> yeah, let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. I mean, look, man, this is a fun card. I mean, it, it had its moments. Uh, a lot of fights going to decision, like I mentioned. But what would you rate this one out of 10, out of curiosity? Oh, fuck, dude. I mean, like, like six and a half, six. Yeah. Five, five and a half to a six, actually. Because, it, it, like, it's... It's like D. It's a passing grade. It, it got me through the week. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Yeah, man. It was it was it was an all right card. It was an all right. Got me through the week, but um, admittedly, it, I'm it more excited. Five and a six and a half for sure. Yeah. 
Admittedly, I'm more excited for this card going down this weekend. It's an Apex card, UC Vegas 78 going down from the UC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, but there's a lot of action fighters up and down this thing, man. And in the main event, we got Vicente Luque back for the first time in a year, riding a 2-5 losing streak, last loss to Jeff Neal by knockout in August of 2022. Angel, he had a fucking brain bleed after that fight, um, which is why he's been out of action for... Uh, you know, over a year. Um, hey, Josh, but he was medically cleared, so it's he perfectly fine. He was medically fun. cleared, you know. I don't know if it's a great thing for a guy that's taken as much damage as Luke has in his career to keep on fighting, but whatever. Uh, he's going to be taking on the former champion, Rafael Dos Anjos. Obviously, we know the story. He said he's not really hunting for the title, but he is kind of down to have fun fights at welterweight and lightweight, and this is what that is at welterweight, a fun fight. Won three of his last four, last defeated Brian Barbarena. Five rounds for the Brazilians, man. Uh, gonna be fun. What do you think? Fuck, dude. I mean, I'll put it like this, Josh. I, and this is something I, I had to tell myself. Forget about the brain blade. Forget about all that. If you're just looking at the fight, like, it's been Sente Luque. This is the record. This is, you know, he lost his last fight. This is RDA right now. I honestly still think Luque. Because uh, I'm not going to lie, I feel like a lot of people are going to be factoring that in, which, look, I get, obviously. But you got to give credit to Vicente Luque. I mean, this guy's still a dog, has has power in his hands, he's the bigger opponent. I think he has literally, as far as, like, physical attributes at this time, has, I think, a reach, height, and age advantage over RDA. But look, RDA's tough technical fighter. He's very smart. He's been in a lot of fights, former champ. Uh, Luque's... Like I said, has all these. I think in the end, all these physical attributes are going to help him get the fight win. Because look, he's 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 good. He's able to get off his back. He's a dog in there, but he has taken damage, which does worry me. I'm still going to pick Vicente Luque, but I didn't want to put that out there to kind of maybe like maybe give you a bit of more freedom to think. Because I, I feel like maybe there's a lot of people that I've seen maybe on Reddit or YouTube leaving comments like, "Fuck it, I am better." You know, I am picking Luque because of this. Which look, I get, but I think. Maybe for this first one, we shouldn't take that too much into consideration just because we haven't seen the results after the fact. Mm. Yeah, so a couple of things, man. Um, you said to kind of put aside, like, the brain bleed and, and to, put, to put aside a couple of these things. And I just – I can't do that, man. Uh, mainly because, like, I saw that fight against Jeff Neal, and I wasn't sure if Jeff Neal had just leveled up or – or whatever it may be, but, dude, he was getting rocked by every single shot in that fight that he was taking. And, and you can you can chalk that up to a bad night, but whenever you're having brain issues afterwards, it's just a bad sign. Um, in terms of the fight itself, if we're looking at the X and O's, like, I, I think because they look at packs more power, I think he's a straight-up welterweight, which he has the advantage of, I think he's going to be bigger on fight night. But I also think RDA's pressure is going gonna, is gonna to – have um, a lot of success and put Luque into positions that he doesn't want to be in. I think RDA is probably going to take a fight down to the mat. I think on the feet he'll be competitive. I'm going to take RDA to get the win, man. I just I'm concerned for Luque. You know that's that's basically what it just comes down to a lot of concern. Um, I don't think that's very misguided, but I mean as far as the fight goes itself, I think it will be fun. I mean, what's your kind of excitement level for this fight? Uh, I mean, look, it's a weird one for me, right? Because I didn't ever really think about these guys matching up ever. Um, if for some reason, like I never even thought about this fight, so it kind of just threw me off when it when it happened. And I guess it kind of makes sense with everything that's going on right now with Luke, right? To get him in there with a guy who is obviously has a name, is still competitive, and has some value to him because he is I mean, Luke. But since Luke is still a ranked fighter and young, and he still needs to be in these important fights, right? And obviously, I think RDA is kind of like the perfect person they could probably give him at this time where it's like, it's not shock bot. He's not ranked, but he's not far outside of the rankings either if he does get a win here, you know. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, probably like an eight, eight and a half. Yeah, I mean, look, it's a fight that I never saw coming either. And it still feels like kind of a weird matchup now. Uh, but, dude, I'm actually legitimately excited for this fight. Like, I think if both these guys show up, and like I said, I'm very concerned for, for Vincente Luque. Like, like I, you don't fuck around with brain stuff, man, especially in combat sports. But, I mean, it, look, if he shows up at 100%, if he is legitimately healed, if he is legitimately doing better, 
I, I will say, Josh, he did have yeah. to get cleared by like multiple medical experts. It wasn't yeah, just yeah. it wasn't just a doctor. I think they even brought in like someone who's like specifically specialized in brain like stuff, which I can't remember the specific title that it is, but I'm just gonna you know, it's someone that, that knows about this kind of stuff. And they were there in front of the Nevada Athletic Commission, they presented mm-hmm. their case and they were like, Yeah, this guy is capable of coming back to fighting which look I am not a medical professional. I do work in healthcare in some capacity. And uh, these multiple people came, presented their case, and they were like, yep, good to go. So I'm going a, I'm to a go with it and kind of like, like I said, this is the first one out. This, is, mm-hmm. will be, this will be the test run. You know, what do we get? Yeah. And for a guy like Luke, because before that beloved Muhammad lost, they're looking at Vicente Luke like, oh, shit, like title challenger. Like he's he's top five guy. Like he's the real deal. Um, and also, like, I mean, if he can get back, to, I don't I he maybe can get back to that place, and that, it all starts here. So we'll have to see. I'm very intrigued. Both these guys going in very different directions. It's going to be a fun main event. Nonetheless, co-main event. Two guys going in different directions again. Uh, another, comes Watson, another, another odd one, right? It's almost like, it's not the same parallel, but it has some similar attributes, right, as far as matchmaking. Exactly. Comes Swanson coming back up to featherweight, lost to Jonathan Martinez, uh, last October, that was his bantamweight debut. Uh, probably go down as the last bantamweight fight, too. Uh, taking on Hakeem Dawadu. Uh, we know the story here. Pretty well-liked guy. I, I didn't really have higher expectations for him whenever he got to the UFC. I thought he was going to move um, move quicker, I guess. But, I mean, look, 13-3-1, and one, still a good guy, barely outside the top 15. Uh, going to be for the first fight in roughly a year. What do you think about this one? I mean... Once again, dude, this one's another one where I just, like, didn't – I was like, it, it came up, and I was like, all right, hey, sure, we'll go with this. Uh, I do feel like if this is probably going to be Cubs' last fight. I mean, the guy is literally going on 40 this year, uh, which credit to him, right? He's still kicking it, right? He's still here. Um, the 135 experiment didn't work. Glad he's back up. Um, look, Hakeem Daudu, you know, who's a, a guy who's – has traditionally like a Muay Thai kind of style in the stand-up. Has pretty good kicks. I wouldn't say Jonathan Martinez level kicks. Is able to kind of maybe replicate some of that similar stuff. He will find success here. And he's also a younger guy. Has been in relatively competitive matchups against higher level competition. I expect to find success here. I mean, if this was a prime Cub Swanson or even a younger Cub Swanson, I'd have full-on faith in Cub to win this. But at this time, I just, it's just, I mean, look, he's just not here and he has miles on him and he's older. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, this is clearly one of those, like, uh, you know, you change of the guard. Here. I mean, yeah, it was, it was a change of the guard. You know, they want one guy out and they want one guy to kind of push through. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I'm going to take Hakeem. I'm a huge Cub Swanson fan. Love that motherfucker, man. I love Killer Cub. Um, but look, I mean, at 39 years old, I wonder what the matchmaking is, the the decision making is. Sometimes, like they alternate between giving him these veteran fights and and then giving him like a young up and coming buck. You know what I mean? And, and they've literally gone like that. Like if you go look at his record, it's Hakeem Daudu, Jonathan Martinez. I mean, it kind of changes. It went Hakeem Daudu, Jonathan Martinez, Darren Elkins, Giga Chikazi, Daniel Pineda, Chrome Gracie, Shane Burgos. Yeah. You know, like you you kind of see the Hanato Mokano, Frankie Edgar, Brian Ortega. Artem Lobov, Duho Choi, like the pattern. And look, you can even go back one more to, to Kawajiri. You know, like it's it's been a like a reoccurring thing through his career. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so it's just been odd. It's been odd matchmaking more than anything else. Look, it, it, I mean, it's it's gonna happen. It just it just sucks. Uh, but look, we gotta get look. It's Cubs wants it still, Josh. Like the body's still there. Maybe the body doesn't function as once it probably did. But he could he could always come out here and give us a little magic, Robbie Lawler, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, shit, ruthless Robbie Lawler. I mean, that's an all time moment uh, for my money. But yeah, I hope I'd like to see that happen. Uh, I don't have much faith in it though. I'm gonna go ahead and take a team. Uh, I hope at the very least the fight is entertaining. But look, man, up and down this card, you can see the Vegas 78. There's a couple of bangers. Which ones do you most want to talk about? Oh man, I think I think this should have been the co-main event because Khalil is a ranked a ranked fighter. Uh, Khalil Roundtree. Versus Chris Dawkins, which I think is well, nah, well, I don't, I don't know. I think it can be a banger. Uh, I believe this is this will be Dawkins' official debut at 205. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, they were scheduled to fight two months ago. Didn't end up coming through. Uh, Doc has had an injury, so let's see how he recovered. Didn't, I'm looking on Tapology. It doesn't list it. But, uh, I mean, Khalil Rantry's ranked, Josh, at light heavyweight. I mean, he can he can possibly do something here. He wasn't talking about retirement too long ago, but he's strong three wins together. Dustin Jacoby, Carl Wilson, and Modestus Bukakis, who just found his way back in the UFC. Um, I don't think Chris Dawkins necessarily adds a lot to his streak, but it's another one under his belt. And uh, he's doing very well for himself outside of the cage, if anybody's wondering. I know he's invested a lot into property and stuff like that, so he's done he's done very well with his money. So I'm sure if he does the, decide to retire, he doesn't, you know, he's not going to be, I wouldn't say he's, he'd be, you know, he's not necessarily balling, but he's not suffering either. Yeah. Uh, and then, Josh, this this matchmaking here, man, just hurts me. Marcus McKee. JP Vez, oh, God, God damn, it. damn it, God damn, damn it. it, why, why do they do this to me, why do they hurt me this way, yeah, why do they hurt JP Vez this way, I mean, look, he has had, in re- that I can remember very easily, one of the worst UFC runs, um, 0-3, this is probably 100% of his last fight on his contract, must win, and they're giving him 7-1 Marcus McKee, who had a sick debut over uh, Journey Newsom. Yeah. I mean, this one just hurts, man. just hurts. Um, yeah. I mean, look, dude, JP buys, like you mentioned, the saddest UFC run um, I've maybe ever seen. Um, and I'm mean, like legitimate. I'm not being sad, like oh it's sad, but like, oh you know. Like, I mean, I'm legitimately sad for JP Buys. This poor fucking guy had his wife leave him. He's lost every single fight in the UFC that he's had. He's 0 and three, but he's not just 0 and three. He's lost. He lost to Cody Durden by knockout, Bruno Silva by knockout, and got dropped by Montel Jackson so many times he set a UFC record. Yeah, not a record you want to set. <laughs> this poor fucking guy. So. I hope he gets a win. I like Marcus McGee a lot. I hope at the very least he's competitive, you know. Yeah, I just, I, it, it's a hard-fought fight. Maybe they decided to bring JP Vise back, right, if he does lose. Uh, yeah. But who who knows, man. But look, maybe JP beats Marcus McGee, gets the upset, you know, like, yeah, always possible. Uh, another fighter we need to highlight who's coming back after kind of a decently long layoff, Josh, uh, Monster at Ruiz. Last time we saw her was in 2021. After losing that man at Lemos, after getting knocked out in the first, but I felt like it was a little early of a stoppage. I felt like they could have let her recover a little bit. But hey, man, it's just my opinion. It is what it is. It was, it was a, a little scary. Uh, but she's back now. She's taking on Jacqueline Ar- Amorim. Amorim. I think I saw her fight, her debut, and it was uh, it was rough if I remember right. So, uh, let's see how Monserrat is able to bounce back after having. I think over a year layoff now, right? We had to go over like in a year and a half, maybe a little plus, almost approaching two years yeah. at this point. It's been a minute, yeah. But I'm curious to see what kind of changes she's made to her game because she's still someone that I have a lot of interest in. I'm very high in. And look, her her last loss is Amanda Lemos, who's fighting for the title next week. You yeah. Know? So uh, a little heartbreaking for me, Josh. Brady Highstand was supposed to be on this undercard. Instead, Jose Johnson, former Contender Series competitor, gets the call up against Demond Blackshear. Uh, and uh, someone that I really am curious to see how they bounce back. Opening up the card, Juliana Miller, Juliana Miller, Ultimate Fighter winner, taking on Luana Santos. I mean, her last performance was just sad, man. Disappointing, you know. Like she had some of the most entertaining fights on that season, and her UFC run has just not been it. Like. She did get a win over Broken Walker, obviously, to to get her, I guess, official win into into tough, but or as a tough winner. But that Veronica Hardy fight was definitely just like I don't know, just such a letdown, you know. And she was the favorite in that too. Everybody, uh, I think, Veronica Hardy was a decent sized uh, underdog. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. I mean, well, to be fair, I thought it was more of just a case of Veronica Hardy looking damn good, man. Um, yeah, I yeah, thought, yeah. I mean, you got to give her credit, but Veronica Hardy had been out of the cage for quite some time, too. That's the other reason yeah. why it was kind of like, you know. Yeah, you're not wrong. You're definitely not wrong there. Um, yeah, look, man, I'm, I'm excited to see the return of Keeler Miller. I think she has a lot of potential. Um, obviously, still very young in her career. Still, I mean, it, she she won the whole season of the Open Fire, but she's 27, only, what, five pro fights, six pro fights. 
so she's very young in her career. Uh, so she has a lot of time to improve. Excited to see the return of Terrence McKinney, man. I mean, two losses in a row. And granted, that Nazim loss was very, very controversial. Still, but still counts as an LMO record. Coming in here, short notice to face Mike Breeden. Interested to see how that one goes for him. Still young. I still think Terrence McKinney still has a lot of uh, potential. Still only 28 years old. So we will have to see how that goes. And Jamie Pickett, Josh Frum, this is going to be a banger, low-key banger on the main card. Uh, yeah, man, I think that this is not a – it's not going to blow your hair back or anything, but, like, for an Apex card, pretty solid, man. I'm, I think I'm, we'll be yeah. surprised, right? Like, I feel like there's going to be a lot of fetishes. I'm not calling that early without obviously knowing anything and just seeing any of the fights, but, hey, I just – I feel like there's something in the water. Yeah, well, there is a lot of uh, action fighters across this card, so it kind of makes sense. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. It's not the only MMA going down this weekend, though, my man. Uh, Bellator 298 going down from the Sanford Pentagon in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Welterweights in the main event: Logan Storley, Brennan Ward. Uh, not a title shot on the night. Not a title shot on the line. No title on the line. But this fight's gonna be an absolute fucking banger, dude. I mean, Brennan Ward ever since he's come back, all bangers. So, what do you think about this one? Uh, I mean, look, he has this, and I said this early on about Brandon Ward. I'm like, look, in his return, he has a short period of time to get back right into mix and be able to capture a title. I mean, he's 35 years old. I mean, this is the time. This is going to be your last chance. You got to do it against this tough kid, this, this wrestling ace. And uh, I mean, look, he's fought a guy who was 10 and 10, Brandon Bell. We, I mean, we got to be, we got to be, you know, honest here. Guy who was twelve and seven in Cassius game. He's knocked all these guys out. And then Sabah Masi. Now he's taking on Logan Storley, which none of those guys were like Logan Storley. Which granted, I mean, there is no one like Logan Storley, right? We gotta <laughs> mm-hmm. But I mean look, this is this is his chance. This is one one opportunity to get to the title, I think. I mean he has to lay it out there. I need to see something. I I, I better I can't see this guy be on his back for all five rounds, you know what I mean? I can't see him get to the like yeah. I you need to let it out there. You got to lose that dog out, and you got to let those hands flow, which is gonna be very tough against Logan Story, who is obviously developed a very strong game at this point. And uh, I mean, we've seen him on the mat, man. We know what he's capable of. Yeah, for sure, man, for sure. So uh, I'm expecting Logan Story to go out there and get the win in this one. I'll say that straight off the top. Um, that being said, I would be disappointed if he went out there and just and just wrestled him, man. Um, I would be really, really disappointed if, if the fight went that way. Or at least uh, a wrestle fit. You know what I mean? Like, at least... Yeah, because, a, yeah I mean, just as an example, but, like, his, his Michael Page fight, you know what I mean? Like, just did nothing. Oh, underwhelming, right? Very underwhelming. Um, so, and look, man, I know it's going to be a strategy, but let's... Let's, let's let's show it, man. Let's show it. You, like, Bellator, they're literally... Their time's running out. They're, these are going to be the final Bellator cards of all time. You got a chance, Logan Storl. You can make history, man. You can put on a great performance, or you can be people remember for the rest of the time. Oh damn! Like Bellator's second to last card of the main event with Logan Storl was fucking terrible. Like it's just so you know. And hey, he might even get a title shot if he wins. So let's let's put it out there. Let's 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 work on it. Um, I hope the fight's entertaining, yeah, and it will be if Brendan Ward gets his way. That man only has fun fights, so we'll see. Uh, Coleman event: Valentin Moldovsky taking on Steve Mowry. Valentin Moldovsky, we know the story here, former interim champion, got a lot of potential coming out of Fedor team, but he's riding a three-fight winless streak to this point. Steve Mowry, tall Steve Mowry, 10-0-1. Um, obviously, these two last fought, let me, let me rephrase, I don't even think I said it. These guys previously fought Belter 284 uh, last August. They will now be running it back um, here in South Dakota in the Coleman event, man. What do you think? I mean, it, obviously, nice to see these guys running a bit back. Obviously, there was there was a lot more to see in that fight. I mean, Steve Harry, I mean, you don't see a lot of heavyweights who have, who their game is heavily focused around grappling, and that's kind of this guy's main thing. Uh, from Moldovsky, though, I expect him to find a lot of success in this fight. I don't. Are we doing official picks? Or are we doing picks at all? Just just cause. Oh, I let's mean, let's we 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 can skip it honestly. Oh, I mean, it, you know, I'll, it, well, look, I'll put it like this: uh, if I were to pick a fight, I. Poker winner, I think, would probably be Moldovsky. I think if he just stops the takedowns, doesn't put himself in compromising positions on the ground, he should have this one. His stand-up should, is going to be better than Steve Mowry's, without a doubt. Mm-hmm. That's about how I feel as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, man, I, I, it should be a fun fight, hopefully. 
Rest of the card, I mean, look, man. I mean, there's there's a lot of fun. Deltor really likes to put on long cards. I've noticed these days. Uh, maybe it's because they just only have one fight card a month at this point. But uh, I mean, yeah. it's 17 fights, Josh. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a long one. But I mean, which which fights do we to talk about, man? There are a couple of really fun ones on here. One of my favorite 185ers across like any promotion, Dalton Ross, that's taking on Aaron Jeffrey. This guy is a fucking superhero when you look at him. <laughs> uh, 27 years old, got a big win not so long over long over Romero Cotton, who's also another physical freak. Uh, guy who wrestled at, at a UNK, obviously his, you know, he, he, I mean, if you follow Bellator, you know this guy, you know what he was coming up with. And also, uh, Dalton Rosta, kind of a homegrown Bellator talent, had some fights outside of, uh, of Bellator and the, and the Ami, so has a fair bit of experience. His record is 8 and 0, but he also has 6 or 7 Ami wins, so he is no stranger to cage. He's running a 15 white, 15 fight total win streak across Pro and Am. 27 years young. I think I've already said that, but I mean, this is just a uh, man. I just I, this guy gets me really excited, man. It's one of those guys that I, I've, I've been loved following his career. Yeah, man. I mean, and you may not highlight him. I'm going to highlight his opponent, Aaron Jeffrey. Uh, also a dog, by the way. Yeah, also a dog coming out of Ontario, man. A guy that I wanted to see get a shot for a long time. Lost in the contender series whenever he was on there back in 2021. Stayed working, got signed by Bellator uh, in 2022. Picked up an upset win over Austin Vanderford, knocked him out. Had a competitive uh, decision loss to John Salter in March. We'll see if he can get back on the winning uh, the winning track here against Dalton Rosta. But regardless, I mean, this is going to be a banger of a fight, man. Both of these guys are pretty entertaining. And Dalton Rosta, like you mentioned, I mean, he has the fucking Captain America Super Serum. That dude is jacked out of his fucking mind. Right? I mean, you change the face. You don't know if it's Chris Evans or Dalton Rosta, right? I mean, they literally I mean, call, sure. yeah. they call this fucker Hercules, bro. <laughs> like... Yeah, straight up, dude. I mean, he he looks yeah he's 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 peeled out of his fucking tree. Okay, uh, so yeah, it should be a fun fight though. I mean, looking up and down the rest of the card, what fights do we we'll talk about, man? Another one down, man. Returning since the last time we saw him, twenty twenty one in the, the tournament, James Gallagher. Uh, I mean, and look, no shame here. His last loss was Patrick Mix, who is now the champ, right? And. uh Sadly, you know, he had fights scheduled. Two of them didn't go through. He had to withdraw them. I don't know if it was visa issues or something. I'm sure some uh, James Krause stuff probably affected some of these fights as well. I'm not going to lie because he was originally supposed to fight uh, Brett Johns, Leonardo Hiko, and obviously heartbreaking Chris Licione, who was supposed to be supported on this card. James Gonzalez steps in. Um, so, yeah, it's nice to see James Gallagher back. I mean, Josh, can you believe the last time we saw James Gallagher fight was in 2021? At the time, his coach was James Kraus. He had moved to Kansas. He had moved to uh, Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri. And now, I mean, I, I don't know where his life at or what happened. I don't know if he had to change camps or go with a different coach. And now he's back. So I'm curious to see what he's able to do now that uh, all this stuff and drama and sadness, too, has happened mm-hmm. leading up to this fight. And whatever stuff he's probably had in his own personal life. You know, everybody has stuff going on. And and something you mentioned, Chris Lee and Sony, I'd be remiss if we don't mention because we talked about it a lot of the time. We actually got our TikTok video uh, about Chris Lee and Sony actually got uh, – last time I saw it, it was like around 80,000 views or something, um, something crazy. And that's just – that's awesome to see the love and support uh, going going to Sunshine, man. Um, and we should – I'd be remiss if I didn't mention $80,000 have been raised uh, for Chris Lee and Sony and his family uh, short of the goal, but we – appreciate anybody who steps forward and supports and this week uh he actually walked out of the hospital two months after suffering a uh, cardiac arrest i mean chris lee and sony he's not fighting this weekend but he's been fighting for the last two months and he's got that fucking dog in him, you know so uh he's made incredible progress over the last i'm not sure if you've seen any of it i'm not sure if you i have on instagram yeah I, just, I i actually went recently it was this past week i went on his either his instagram or his wife's instagram or a Instagram, and I look through, and I'm, I'm happy to see he's making progress. I even saw he interacted with his kid, which is awesome. Uh, I'm yeah. sure that's making him happy, his wife happy, and everybody in their family happy. Yeah, man, and so that, that's awesome to see. But, yeah, like you mentioned, James Gallagher, his original opponent, uh, could be back here, so that should be fun. Um, he's a guy that I'm interested to see how he does, because you know, it really fucks me up. But you know, how James, you know how old he is right now? 
He's still young, right? Like 27, probably 26. He's, 20, he, he's 26 years old, man. Yeah, he's, no, he's young as shit, dude. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's another yeah. kind of not fully, but mostly homegrown kind of belt or talent, dude. This is the thing you gotta appreciate. These guys, they're always young, and they they're in big fights and in big moments. Obviously, like I said, his career right now I think is in a odd spot because, like I said, he fell short in that fight against Patchy Mix, and I was super excited about him. And granted, like I said, this is before we knew what Patchy Mix was capable of. I think fully, and I mean, shit. Since then, I mean, look, I mean, like I said, he's champ now. And it's been so long, and like I said, all the other bullshit that happened in between. Um, but, I, I mean, that I think that's enough there for James Gallagher. We'll, we'll kind of move on. Uh, another one of my favorite young talents, Josh, and but Lucas Brenna, submission. He's taking on Weber Almeida, trained by his dad. Dad was also a professional fighter, also fought in MMA. I mean, just his his talents on the ground are amazing. Uh, if, if you're a jiu-jitsu practitioner or have an interest in, in, in uh, matches that you know was going to go to the ground, Check out my boy Lucas Brenda. You'll you'll have a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And there's a, there's a lot of guys up and down this card that like if you actually pay attention, they're a lot of fun. Uh, Sullivan Colley coming back. He's another guy. I mean, like, look, there's a lot of fun guys on the prelims, and that's where I tell people like, hey, if you want some fun time, like Belgian prelims are straight up free. They're on YouTube. There's no excuse not to watch them. That's where I watch. Like, sometimes, admittedly, like there's like UFC going on, so I can't watch the whole Belgian card. Well, tune into the prelims, man, and they have a lot of young dogs on there. So yeah, a lot um, of young talent. A lot of young talent, and even even then, you got some veterans. Like the Andro Higo is going to go ahead and be on the prelims. You know, he's a fucking dog. Josh, Josh Hill, Josh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's 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 guys out there. So, anyways, man, I think we should move on because we have a fair bit of news to close out the show. Because Israel Adesanya will be returning at UFC 293. We've known that for a while. It was supposed to be Drika Duplessis. However, he can't make it. It's going to be Sean Strickland. Angel, you finally get your wish. You're going to get to see Sean Strickland and Israel Adesanya go back. (laughs) The whole build-up, you said. (laughs) I love it. Yeah, man. I mean, what do you? Yeah, what's your what's your thoughts? We kind of known for a while that the announcement's been coming, but uh, I mean, we knew Izzy was in a fight. We just didn't know if it was gonna be Drake or Sean. And well, we had our answer, and it's Sean. And I'm not complaining, but you kind of know how this fight's probably gonna go. But we'll leave our analysis whenever that comes around, <laughs> or full thoughts and opinions. But I mean, if you want an idea, I mean, you could go watch Alex Bahia, Sean Strickland, if you want a little glimpse into what could happen. Yeah. Even though I don't think on this, I think Sean will probably. It's not crazy. I think he'll rise up to this moment. You know what I mean? I would hope. You know, I think he'll really get motivated in this one, right? Because, I mean, this is, this, this is a shot at it. Why wouldn't he capitalize on it, right? I mean, you, you, I think this is probably the most serious, most dedicated Sean Strickland will probably hit, hopefully, unless the moment gets to him, which I don't think it will. But, I mean, I mean, he's human. We think. We haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think if Sean Strickland shows up for for one, it'll be this one. And look, granted, he shows up every time, but, I mean, like, really just takes it, follows a strong game plan or something, it'll be this one. And, I mean, Sean's, Sean's a tough motherfucker, man. We got to give credit where he do. He's scrappy. We know he's got good stand-up. He's not he's a kickboxer. He's got that neo-Nazi mentality. You can't lose over this. God damn it, Josh. Now we're going to get demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. God, that wasn't as bad as the last last time when you said a uh, the full S A. You know, when you said S A, that's when we almost got fucked over. But you know, that wasn't I, me. That wasn't me. What are you talking about? <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I mean, was, I think it was grape. You said grape. And I was like, no, Josh, it's grape. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, all right. Time. Don't say it, Josh. Stop. No. The ads, the advertisers. God damn it. Um. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, I'm, I pretty much agree with everything you said. I think Sean Strickland's gonna rise to the occasion. I think he has made improvements over the last couple of, uh, last couple of fights. Um, I'm very, I don't wanna say intrigued to see how the fight's gonna go, cause I think Izzy is gonna probably just, it's, I don't wanna say domination, but I think it's gonna be a tactical affair that Izzy will have a, extreme advantage in on the feet. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think if he could beat Alex Pahey on the feet, I think he'd beat Sean Strickland on the feet. That's about as simple as it gets for me. Right. Um, could you imagine, like, a Max Holloway, Calvin Kidder-like performance against Sean Strickland in Australia? Holy fuck. <laughs> that would be crazy. And I think he could do it if he actually tries to. Look, but, I, you know, Izzy's, yeah. Yeah, Izzy's always played it safe for the majority of his title reign. Yeah, and look, to be honest, I mean, ball is in Sean's court, man. 
because we know where Izzy's advantages are. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What is Sean going to do to get through that? You know what I mean? Or give him any any sort of trouble? But I'm, I'm I really hope for the sake of the spectacle. Look, I think as I think for people who follow the sport like we do in hardcore, you're kind of not necessarily super excited about this fight for the fight itself, if not for you know what the antics are going to be back and forth in the lead up. But maybe the casual fan, maybe they got a little bit more interest. But I mean, I mean that's just my thoughts, my opinion. I don't know what you think about it or if you disagree with me on that statement, but I think that's how both uh, groups feel. Yeah, admittedly, I I don't know. I think I'd have to see how the bit. I think the build for the fight could do a lot more casual interest depending on how it goes. Because, but you know what? No, I actually I disagree with that because I saw a lot of like non super like. Uh, into like fight people talking about the Drikus Izzy situation for for the obvious reasons, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, well, I guess it remains to be seen. Uh, well, well to- I mean, I mean, it depends, Josh. If mythical mythical fighter Deshaun Strickland shows up to the to the case and uh, Izzy's representing China, then <laughs> Deshaun Strickland. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll see how Deshaun Strickland goes. Okay. <laughs> but uh <laughs> anyways man uh next up we do have uh another fight announcement my man um logan paul logan paul we talked about logan paul we've known he's returning for a minute but now we have his announcement logan paul will be taking on dylan dennis october 14th on the undercard of KSI versus Tommy Fury. They finally did the fight announcement. Uh, I mean, I guess for me, before I even ask you, uh, why? Why would they book this fight? Uh, is this the right fight to make? I mean, what's your what's your instant reaction to Dylan Daniels versus Logan Paul? I never thought Misfits or these guys would ever work with Dylan after the shit that happened last time. But I was fucking wrong. I guess they will work with this guy again. And... I, I like I we were talking in the green room a little bit. We we're like, so because you had put a tweet out there, so why would they rebook this guy? If he already pulled out once, or what? What are they going to do if he pulls out again? Well, Josh, we found out an hour ago that if Dylan Dennis does not pull out for a you know whatever reasonable reason, he will be fined a hundred thousand dollars by Misfits. Mm-hmm. So yeah, unless Dylan wants to pay that up, there's no pulling out this time. So, yeah. Well, let's see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I just don't know why you would risk it. I mean, I I put I made the meme for our for our social media accounts, and I also went ahead and. I mean, George is a hundred k. I mean, do you want to pay a hundred k? I mean, no, I no. But it's. I mean, would they even enforce? I mean, <laughs> the clause like that only only matter if they actually enforce it. But I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, if it's under a contract, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know how these fucking promoters are with contracts. They don't give yeah. a fuck. They want to see. They want to see it through. Yeah. So we'll see it through. Yeah, man, we'll see it through. But and look, they already got fucked over once. They're not gonna get fucked over again. Yeah, yeah, and look, here's the thing. Also, is. The thing, is this even the right fight from a, a interest perspective? Because I, don't, I, don't, I, I gotta I don't be honest know. with you, I don't really have any interest in, in Dylan Dance in, in any capacity. I mean, I kind of want to see Dylan get beat up. I'm not gonna lie. So, but well, I guess that's fair. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. And, and I think there's some interest there because there's there's a lot of people who don't like Dylan. You know what I mean? So I think that's why yeah. people show up and people want to see Logan's return. I think there's some interest there. Obviously, they'll be there for JJ. So there is some value here, but I will. You're, you're not wrong. I do think they probably could have got someone else for Logan. I don't know who, but there there could have been someone. Who it could have been, I don't know. But there there could have been someone. There, mm-hmm. I don't know who it would have been, but there was they, they could have got someone out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I it just I don't know if it's the right move. I mean, I don't think it's the right move. I think just about anybody they could have gone out and got a big. You know who I think they should have done? Actually thinking about it. I, know who I think Le'Veon Bell. Oh, never mind. That's not who I thought. But that would have been good because yeah. you know who they should have got? Who? Our boy who he dropped his diss track on. <laughs> Antonio um, Brown? Antonio Brown versus Logan. And then Logan walks out to the diss track. Shit, you're right. It's not like Antonio Brown is doing much else besides getting in fucking legal trouble. 
Right. I mean, Jesus Christ. But no, Le'Veon Bell could have been a good one. I mean, that could have been a gateway there, too. You're not wrong. I think that actually could have been a very good matchup. Or you know someone else, which I know this isn't, like, necessarily the best choice or maybe, like, a very good one. And it would have, timeline-wise, it wouldn't have made sense. But Chase Moore. Oh, shit. That would have been hilarious. Yeah. I think that could have been good. At heavyweight, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Chase is not a big heavyweight. And Logan, I mean, this fight's going to happen at 195. Yeah. So, Logan's going to cut for a bit. I mean, Chase could have cut weight too. <laughs> yeah, they could they could find they could find a, a happy middle, but yeah, I mean, look, I mean, final closing thoughts on this one. I'm happy to see Logan back. I mean, I, I'm down yeah. to Logan Paul Box. I think I still think he is one of the better people in this scene. I just don't think he's been able to show it. Yeah, I mean, he's it's only been KSI and Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, I mean, it's been long awaited, right? Like people have actually had kind of some interest in this, and even like. Guys who are more like MMA media based slash boxing based, like they have, like they're not necessarily super interested in all this influencer stuff, but do talk about it. Have been curious about Logan and kind of seeing what he can do, right? Because of kind of the success Jake has had and kind of like, well, what can the brother do? Especially since he's so physically and athletically talented, you know? I mean, we, I mean, shit, we just saw him at what was it called? What was this last uh, wrestling event he was at? Uh, he, my man, he was at SummerSlam. Yeah. Summer, I mean, he was just at SummerSlam, and fuck, dude, my guy won his match, got on a private jet, flew to fucking Texas from Detroit. I mean, dude, dude like this guy's this guy's something else. Yeah, I mean, Logan's killing it right now. So we will, uh, we'll see, man. We'll see what happens. When is this in October, right? Yes, yes, man. October fourteenth on the Zone Pay Per View. That feels so long from now. Yeah, it feel it feels long from now, but we're only really we're two months away, just over. No, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, man, uh, to keep on moving on, we only got a couple things left. Um, this one's kind of a funny one because we haven't heard about this in a minute. Uh, Angel, Elon Musk, and Mark Zuckerberg, they're still talking. They're still talking. They say that they, Mark Zuckerberg has come out and said, "Yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. I think I think Elon is ducking me," which is a hilarious thing. It's a to say it's like a tech nerd, but um, Elon said the fight is not only going to happen, Angel. He said <laughs> it's going to happen on X video. <laughs> Elon Musk. Be, be very careful when you go look for that website, guys. Yeah, they're going to be fighting on. Okay, guys, fellas, it's not Twitter anymore. It's X, and it's not. They they don't. They call it. You know, they're making the video side of it bigger. In fact, we're actually planning on. Gonna, we're going to be on X videos ourselves at some point. Not, I mean, not literally you and me together, but, I mean, we're... Uh, I was about to say, you probably want to reword that one. <laughs> you got to be... Are you, Evan Angel, are you down to watch Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg on X videos? Jesus. <laughs> Josh, I mean, do you even have to ask me? You know, I'm always DTF. <laughs> down to fight. Of course going to watch this on X videos. <laughs> Dude, you're D, you're D, you're DTF to watch him on X videos. <laughs> Dude, if you don't oh, listen to fuck. this, the context to this would be fucking horrendous. Oh my god, yeah. Just you guys, uh, uh, clip this. You know, out of context, courtside sound off. You know, <laughs> Jesus, man. I mean, look. Uh, I think that these guys should fight. I've always been in favor of it. I don't think it will happen. I saw that somebody asked Dana. They're like, Dana, what do you think? Do you think it's more likely that Conor versus Michael Chandler happens or Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg? And he said, and he's like, you know, right now I'd probably lean towards Conor Chandler. But even then, he was like, you know, yeah, he wasn't exactly enthusiastic about either one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I thought that was hilarious. So yeah, but hey, Mark said he asked him August twenty sixth. He said he tried to get a date down, but uh, Elon did not respond. So we'll see if it happens. But nonetheless, man, uh, real quick, we have two quick previews, quick hits to close out the show, man. This one, we talked about it briefly. BKFC 48, man. We haven't talked about BKFC in a minute. But we got to talk about this one because John Dodson is in the main event. He's fighting for BKFC gold against J.R. Ridge. But in the co-main event, Angel, it is Bryce Hall versus G. Perez. Uh, Bryce Hall making the, making the jump, man. He's really going to do it. Going down to the co-main event. What's your excitement level, man? And we talked a lot about influencer boxing. Now that it's actually here, influencer bare-knuckle boxing, what do you think? Like I always said, like, who's going to step up, man? Who's going to be the one to do it? And I got to give credit to the pretty boy and Bryce Hall, man. He's doing it. Like, 
I have a lot of respect, dude. Because this shit is no joke. I mean, his hand, I mean, he, he could, he's gonna have to deal with a lot, he's gonna have to endure a lot of pain. He's gonna 100% get cut up. He's 100% gonna bleed. There's a very high chance he breaks at least one of his hands or fucks up his wrist. I mean, he's gonna have damage after it. I mean, we see, we see these VKFC fights. You very rarely come out of it not fucked up unless you get knocked out really quick or knock someone out really quick. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I have interest. I mean, and also, if Rice finds some success, maybe we can get some other people in there, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, some other celebrities, you know, some other guys. Because, uh, I mean, I mean, they've already had creators before in the past, a.k.a. Blueface, which, I mean, it wasn't bare knuckle. But now we're getting Bryce Hall, who, for some reason, decided to do bare knuckle, and apparently he's going to get paid well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm assuming he's going to get paid well. I mean, I'm excited to see how how this card does, honestly. I mean, above all else. I mean, I've been seeing Bryce Hall get the respect from, like, the MMA community, like, and in, in online people who don't really, like, influence or stuff. Um, and good, because, I mean, shit, dude, bare, it's bare knuckle fighting. Like, what the fuck, you know? Like, I thought, Yeah, dude, this isn't, like, yeah. if... if like, yeah, go ahead. If, if this was like some, like if he was doing a boxing event, like just on some other undercard, right? And it, there wouldn't be like I think as much level of interest as there is now because it is bare knuckle. Mm-hmm. I mean, do bare knuckle could be hard to watch at times, even for us who are like really into sports. Sense, I'm like, damn, this is <laughs> a bit a little rough, man. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep watching, you know, because I, I mean, this is a banger. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I would say their card, they didn't like put uh, more names on it, which I'm kind of depressed about because I feel like they could have built upon this too, especially because you got a guy in John Dotson and you got Bryce Hall in the co main of it. And so, kind of a letdown there, and especially since they didn't try to like maybe get another creator here or convince another creator. But hey, man, it is what it is. I think it'll still be fun. And the, I think the one beauty about BKFC, dude, is you don't need to know the guys to have great fights, which is kind of awesome. <laughs> Yeah, correct. I mean, they always have fun fights, no matter who it is. So, um, and but I, I am on your side. I don't understand why they didn't put bigger names on air. Uh, definitely an interesting decision. Yeah, they kind of dropped the ball, man. I mean, I think they could have built a sick card with maybe like Mike Perry in there and John Dotson or you know Eddie Edwards. I mean, I know Chad Mendes, but I don't know. If, I don't know if this. You know, maybe you could have convinced those guys to come back. But they could have done something pretty cool here. I just, I don't know. Kind of a little letdown there, but I'm excited because. I'm curious to see how Bryce Hall does, man. I really am. I know the his fight with McBroom didn't go as expected, but, I mean, look, it's not the same sport, you know, mm-hmm. whether you decide to admit it or not. I mean, we've seen it. It's factual. We've seen boxers even come in and try to compete and not find the, the same level of success they did when they were, you know, pros and they were boxing. And then bare knuckle, you know, there's they, you know, not always had uh, the best showings. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see what Bryce Hall can do here. Yeah, we will see. I'm very excited, uh, very intrigued. But last thing on the day, man, uh, our boy Robert Helenis is stepping up on short notice. We didn't know if Anthony Joshua was going to have a fight after his uh, clash with Dillian White was canceled. Uh, give me your kind of brief preview, man. What are, you, what are you thinking right now for AJ versus Robert Helenis coming in here on a week's notice? I mean, uh, dude, it's a week. It's heavyweight. I mean, anything. Could, look, one thing that Robert Helenis has going for him. Nothing to lose. It's short notice. He can go out there and, and put it all on the line, and it won't fuck up his stock. And it's heavyweight. Anything can fucking happen. And we know age has been touched in the past. So I just hope for him he could uh, leave it all out there and put himself in that mix and, you know, maybe be called up for some other big fights and still be – because he's a fun guy. You know, he's, he's a guy – I mean, shit, those two Adam Kawanaki fights, holy fuck, dude. Yeah. They're great. Yeah, so we know Robert Helenis has that dog in him. Admittedly, obviously going to take AJ for the win here, but look, I mean, let's let's see, man. Let's see. <laughs> I mean, let's see. I mean, you got to be a genius to, do, to call that one, right? <laughs> yeah, right. But hey, it, it pads the numbers, so I mean, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, man. Um, any closing thoughts before we go ahead and get out of here, man? No, man. I'm just excited for next week. I mean, the, I mean, the pay per view snuck up on me, but fuck it, man. I'm ready. Let's go. God damn, DTF, yeah, Josh. Oh! Oh! Hey. Anyways, man, yeah. I hope um hope you like the show guys. Uh I am at Josh Shivanoff on Twitter. He's at Angel War Take underscore O one. I quit that sound for all things related to the show. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace and butt grease. Mouse click. <laughs>